What's up guys? Today we are talking about jerk baits, but not just any jerk bait conversation. We are gonna have a cold water deep diving jerk bait conversation. Yeah, absolutely. You into this? Let's do it, man. Okay, now in the winter, this is something that we both love to do. Yeah. It's a great way to catch them, mm -hmm. but it's a little bit different than just running the bank with a jerk bait. Absolutely. So we're gonna More break specific. down Definitely. Yeah. We're gonna break down everything we do from the gear to the presentation to the cast to the retrieve so that you guys catch a bunch of fish on these this winter. So let's do it. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the Hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just want to elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. All right, guys, welcome back. I am Ben with The Hookup Tackle, Tackle Taku on Instagram, being joined once again by my buddy Julius, aka so Hippie. Uh, follow him, he is our guy. If you guys want to fish and learn how to use any of this stuff, he can take you out and break all of this down on the water. Uh, also fish the Bassmaster Open, so he travels all around the country. So if you ever just want to like, hang out with him. You can see where he is and just show up at his hotel room early in the morning. <laughs> come and, on. Yeah, wait for him to come out, right? Address uh, link below. Right yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're also joined by our buddy CJ at Desert Bassin on Instagram. Man. So much better than Jeff. I don't even yeah. know where Jeff is. It just rolls off the tongue better. Yeah, CJ. It does. Yeah, who CJ. needs Jeff? You got called DJ the other day. It was pretty offensive, actually. You got called DJ? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, CJ Remember the guy. people used to call you JC? JC, oh yeah. That was an old one. Now I'm pissed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Today, guys, we are talking about deep diving jerk baits. Yeah. And we're going to specifically kind of talk about it in this season, which is kind of colder yeah. water. And that's really kind of when we pull this out, anyways. For sure. You can throw a deep diving jerk bait whenever you want to throw a deep diving jerk bait. Yeah. But we find that this time of the year, this is when a deeper bait like this can really be effective. Why is it more effective this time of the year for us? So I think. <clears throat> Especially for us, just because some of the places we live, and I think that's for, all, I mean, other places around the country too, but they're going to be deeper in the water column. And then the fish are a lot more lethargic too. So I think the baits that dive deeper have a, that more tighter motion than some of those shallower running jerk baits that can get out and break out and move around a lot more erratic that I think target those wintertime bass that are a lot more slower moving. Yeah, I think that's a good point. So let's talk, let me, let me break down two points that you just made. Yeah. So first off, bass behavior. So when it's cold, yeah. right? <clears throat> bass love to be shallow, Yeah. right? Like they want to be in the on the bank. They right. want to be shallow and, and cover ambushing shit, right? Mm -hmm. But when it just gets too cold, why do they, why do they leave the shallows and go deeper? So not only is it more comfortable for them and the water temperature is a little uh, warmer for them, but the food slides out. Just, I mean, if the food stayed shallow year round, I'm sure the fish would stay shallow yep. year round, right? Yep. Um, so once that bait slides off and it drops into those, you know, ditches, drains, those deeper channels, um, whether there's structure there or not, if the bait's there, that's where those fish are going to position themselves. And, you know, that's yeah. where I start this and that's, time of year. And that's really what it why I wanted to ask that because yeah. a lot of times people think, okay, it's deep. They just look for deep water, but the whole key to all of this is food. Yeah. Right. A bass will go anywhere where there's food. Right. It's a lot like us. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. I mean, so it's like 38 degrees outside right now, which is mm -hmm. crazy for yeah. us. Right. It might as well be like negative 38. Yeah. But if there's a steak sitting outside, yeah. And there's no steak in here where it's nice and comfortable. Let's I'm go. going outside. Absolutely. Right? So it's the same way for a fish. So it's it's obvious that they're going to stay with the food. Yeah. But the other thing to remember is that as a fish's metabolism slows in the mm -hmm. cold water, 
And this is really about the bait that I'm talking about. Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of bait that live in our lakes are relatively like pelagic type swimmers. Like oh, when you yeah. think of like shad or herring or, you know, uh, any number of like open water bait fish. Yeah. Dude, in the summertime or in the spring when the water's warm, right. those fuckers can swim like miles a day. Yeah. Right? So they, they'll be in the back of this creek arm one day and they'll just swim their way out and out in the open water the next day. Yeah. And... You know they can just go forever yeah but when it's cold they they really tightens up what they are willing to do and able to do yeah. right because their metabolism is down they're not eating as much they're slower moving yeah and their movements are much slower and tighter yep. which gets back to your jerk bait comment about you know, shallow baits tend to a lot of times have a lot of side to side movement, yeah. a lot of erratic action. Mm -hmm. And you know, when a, when a bait fish is comfortable, that's right. what they're doing. They're yeah. jumping around and they're, you know, scurrying away. But in yeah. the winter, they're kind of hardly moving. Yeah. Right. There's just short little bursts, mm -hmm. real tight. Right. So if we're trying to mimic the real thing, yeah, that's what we need to be doing. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a handful of baits that do that properly for us. Yeah. And then also, I think we can talk about cadence as well as like a huge. I think it's super important. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to vary, too, on cadence as you change baits. Absolutely. Too. So yeah. let's let's jump in. I just dropped what I needed to talk about. OK. <laughs> Take that half a beer away from me, CJ. Yeah, you're <laughs> cut off. Okay, so let's talk about, let's do this. Let's talk about some of our favorite baits. Now, yeah. use whatever bait you guys want to use, yeah. right? So there are other baits that we're not going to talk about that I know that we sell a ton of. I know a lot of you guys catch a lot of fish. At some point, you have to start making decisions. Right. Because you can't throw everything. Yeah. Right? So at some point, you have to say, all right, I like this bait the best. I'm going to start with this. And if it doesn't work, then I'm going to go to plan B and plan yeah. C and plan D. And eventually, you know, you shouldn't probably move on to plan K and L <laughs> yeah, and M. Like, if they, yeah. Yeah, if they haven't <laughs> yeah. bit by plan, you know, yeah. D or E, it's probably time to move on from yeah. the jerk bit, right? <laughs> I mean, it's just a couple options. Right. Yeah, it's it. usually like A, B. Yeah. Yeah, and then we're Switch. doing something else. Yeah, yeah, picking up a blade bit. Right. So <laughs> let's let's dive into this really quick. So when we're talking about a deep diving jerk bait, so you have a Stacy in your hand, yeah. right? I have a 110 plus two. So these are probably the two like staple, mainstay, yeah. deep diving uh, jerk baits. Mm -hmm. We're talking about going from a normal jerk bait that's going to probably be in like four to six feet of water. Yeah. Like if you're going to throw a regular 110 or a regular pointer 100, and we're dropping this down now kind of below the 10 foot threshold. Yeah. Right? So we're really talking about getting these baits in like 10 to 15 feet, right. usually is where the bait is going to go. Yeah. Depending on how we fish it, depending on the line, the water temp, the hooks, yeah. you can make these actually slow sink to where you can get these down into 20, yep. 25, 30, right? Yep. So don't be a play. This is the time of the year to play if you're gonna yeah. if you're gonna mess with things. This right? is another rabbit hole. <laughs> yes. So again, I don't want to spend too much time on customization because I don't want to like stifle your creativity. Yeah. But keep in mind that every adjustment you make to a bait is going to change yeah. the movement. It's going to change if it floats, if it sinks, if it suspends. Yeah. So you can use that to your advantage or your disadvantage if you choose the wrong thing, right. you screw it up. Yeah. But, you know, for instance, if this bait is designed to sit nose down and suspend by changing from a size six hook to a size five hook, it's going to now be a slow sink. So yeah. on the pause, it's gonna sink down and you're gonna get some extra depth, right? Yeah. If you want it to float up higher, you could go to a smaller hook or you could go to heavier line, yeah. right? Or a mono instead of a fluorocarbon that's gonna help lift it. So there's so many different possibilities right. that you can do to these baits. But out of the package, yeah. 10 to 15 foot is probably what most of these are gonna get. Right, yeah, right? and you make those adjustments like as your day is going on on the water and you can you know, tell like, you know, maybe you put a bigger hook on it or what Ben was saying, but if a fish, every fish you're catching is just barely having the bait or they're hooked on the outside, you know, you can make those adjustments like 
maybe I need to get it down deeper or on forward facing sonar if they're not reacting to it or they're coming right up to it. You can make those all that stuff you're just talking about by paying attention to what's going on that day. Yeah, for sure. And let's talk about that really quick and then we'll get into some cadence stuff. If you are using forward facing sonar, yeah, right? And you're seeing that your bait's moving and a fish moves up to it and moves away, yeah, right? Or if you're not using forward facing sonar and you're getting bites and you're getting them in but they just have like one hook or they're just really weirdly hooked, mm -hmm. what are some rabbit holes that you go down to try to tighten it up and get them to actually eat it. Cause ideally it, yeah. when you, when you have this thing paused, you right. want them to come up and just yeah. get it right. T-bone the thing mm -hmm. so that they're hooked on both sides of the mouth. They're not coming out. Right. But if you're getting them and they're just hooked on top of the head or they have one of these back trebles to where they're like just half assing it. Right. Something's not quite right. Yeah. Where do you usually start dissecting it? So I definitely going to start with cadence or like how I move the bait. You know, if they're coming up to it, maybe my pauses get longer, um, that kind of stuff. So if the pauses get longer or maybe sometimes in the winter time, if they get right behind it and then they don't eat it on the pause, sometimes it takes that, that rip rip. And then when you pause it and they get right behind it, then like a super crazy, like erratic action and then stop it again. You know, they need, maybe they need that extra, like, okay, I need to eat this. Some kind of trigger. Yeah. Even in the winter time, like yeah. it could be super cold and you're just doing one of these waiting forever, but they're not getting it all the way. After you've been sitting there for a while, then add like a little crazy rip, 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 and then stop. Yeah. And sometimes that, that gets it. Yeah. You know, or feathered trebles, you know, for me is a big thing too. Add, whether it's in the front or the rear, it's all situational, but yeah. I use that tool a lot, add a and, feather. And for people that don't know, by adding a feathered treble, you're going to definitely change the movement of the bait. Yes. But on the paws, instead of the hook just sitting there, yeah. the feather is going to kind of open and breathe, mm -hmm. right? So the bait is just going and it's paused, but now the feather is starting to breathe yeah. and open and it's just giving them one more possible trigger exactly. in their head. Why don't you always use a feather treble? So I think sometimes it's too much. Mm. So sometimes I think they get behind it instead of you know, making them enticing to eat it, they yeah. go, what the hell is that on right. the Why is there so many things happening? Yeah. Right. And yeah. you just, like I said, you gotta let the fish tell you what to do and you gotta be an, adopt an adoptive angler and you know, yeah. make those adjustments on the fly and they'll definitely help. I like your, I like your first answer to where do you start? I think so many times it's very easy for people to fail or something or not have success at something and blame the gear. Right. Right. Yeah. Like it's always like, oh, I didn't have the right bait. Yeah. Right. And sometimes they're right. Yeah. Sometimes the, there was a bait that might have outfished what they had, mm -hmm. but I think day in and day out, the angler is the, the place to start. Right. Your cadence, your angle, your you know, presentation. Yeah. That should be the first place you dissect. Absolutely. And then if it's still going wrong, feather treble. Yeah. Maybe a red hook. Color. Yeah. Like, I mean, all these things can have a huge impact. So once you know that your cadence is right, your yeah. angle is right, your area is correct, mm -hmm. and they're still not responding, that's the time to start going down the color rabbit hole, exactly. the feather treble rabbit hole. Yeah. So maybe the size rabbit hole or Maybe they don't want this sound, they want that sound. Yeah. Your B plan, C plan. Yeah, there's so many different L things. plan. Yeah. I mean, sure. even something I mean, as simple as depth can, can yeah. get, you know, Dude, where, I, wherever they're comfortable at. Yep. Yeah. Like I've had bites where I've thrown like a plus one. Yeah. And, you know, forward facing sonar, you can see them come up to it, they just don't want to commit. And winter time for bass, it's all about using as little energy as possible. So you switch to like a plus two, and now I'm getting more bites just because it's a little deeper and it's in their zone. They don't have yeah. to put out as much energy. Something as simple as that. There's yeah. lots of tweaks. And vice versa. Right, exactly. Sometimes they want to eat up, and they don't want to eat this way. Yeah. So sometimes you're throwing the plus two because it's winter and they should be down there deeper, but they're, all the, the bait is higher yeah. for whatever reason. Maybe the bait moved up. Maybe it's sunny. Maybe you know, something so, shifted and they're used to eating this way. Right. So I learned a little trick and like, I've never tried this or anything, but I learned guys will throw them on mono if they want them suspending jerk baits to have a little bit of a rise. They'll end up throwing it on heavier monofilament just to like, you know, get to them give to rise. Yeah. A bait that's meant to suspend, it'll slowly start to rise and that's a little sneaky deal 
just online yeah or i've added like extra split rings to drop the hook a little bit and maybe it's not the rear maybe it's the center one just like they are eating it goofy yeah just just to deals. give you a little edge to get him in the boat. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Beats my bobber method. <laughs> <laughs> What's your bobber, bobber method? Yeah, no, wait. Totally you've got it. No, you've hey, right, yeah, okay. you I'll, said I'll, it. I'll spill the beans, yeah. Float, okay. Float and fly jerk bait. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Where's Jeff? <laughs> Where's Jeff? Bring, <laughs> bring Jeff back. He wouldn't be having this nonsense. No. Oh, great. Anyways. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about some baits. If you guys are just starting in deep diving jerk baits, again, Almost every brand has some type of deep diving jerk bait. If you're looking to get a starting point, this is probably the one two punch starting point that you guys are gonna want to get into. Yeah. So this is a Mega Bass Edo Vision 110 plus two, mm -hmm. and that's a Lucky Craft Stacy 90. 90. Stacy 90 has been around <laughs> for a very long time yes. and continues to smoke them, yeah. but it is much, less on the radar right. than other baits because it's been out for so long. Forever. And in fairness, Lucky Craft just kind of, they're just kind of like a, a steady, right. like they just do their thing and, yeah. you know, always make stuff, always sell stuff, but there's not like ever a ton of hype poured onto it. Right. 110 plus two is a relatively new bait. It's only yeah. been out for a few years the and block. there was a huge hype machine behind it. Yeah. So like everybody got behind it. Right. Now you have like the re-range is a new one. You've got yeah. the MR re-range. So as newer baits come out, they're going to get a lot of hype, mm -hmm. but this all things aside day in and day out, it's really hard to beat a yeah. Lucky Craft Stacy in the winter in deeper water. Yeah. Talk. Why don't you start? Talk to me about this bait. Yeah. So just growing up on the West Coast, this this bait was always around and always getting your ass kicked by it. So you had to put it in your arsenal and learn it, or you're just gonna keep getting your ass kicked. So uh, when it came to cold water, you know Highland Reservoir, or even you know shallow water places with grass, it didn't matter if you needed that a little bit of extra depth and tight movement. You can't beat the Stacy 90. Um, you know, as far as line and stuff, fishing it, like I fished it on 10 pound, like that's pretty staple, but I've also fished it on eight, trying to get it down deeper and also fished it on like 12 and 14. If you're around, you know, hard cover and that kind of shit. Yeah. But I mean, as far as all around deep, cold water, it's the deal, man. So I should, I should note that back when I was tournament fishing a lot, we'd fish like yeah. a patch, like really cold, yeah. <laughs> deep, smallmouth places. Mm -hmm. We would throw this on four pound, five pound, yeah. six pound, and get it down to like 20, 25 feet, like yeah. super long cast, Niche. right? Spinning rod. Badass. And and essentially what you do, whether you're super light line or you're throwing 10, yeah. right, or whatever, is on a bait like any of these, what I would recommend is because these lips are so long, yeah. make the initial cast, let the bait land, and then crank Count it. Count it down, yeah. Right? Like crank it a little bit so that the lip has a chance to actually dig in the water and get the bait down a little bit mm -hmm. and then start your cadence. Yep. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Definitely count your bait down. Yep. Set yourself up for the cast or for the presentation and then start your cadence. Yeah. A lot of times if you just throw it out and immediately start jerking, because these lips are so long, if it's not set right in your first jerk, it might come out of the water, it might spin yeah. it sideways, and there's just a lot of chance for like your line to wrap right. and just shit to get kind of funky, yeah. and then you just ruin the perfect angle that you have. Yeah. So crank it down a little bit, then start your cadence. Now, mm -hmm. cadence is different on this than yeah. it is on this. So talk to me about your cadence and where you're starting and what you yeah. do. So typically this time of year, I mean, like, like we said, this is a cold water bait um, for us anyway. I mean, you can use it in other temperatures, but cold water is where it shines. I start on a traditional, just count my bait down and then just a rip, rip, pause. That's where I start. And then maybe I'll add like three rips and a pause. And then where I think it's critical as far as timing is how long you pause. I don't think you're, you know, popping it really makes a difference maybe they want it one time or twice but that's not where i get crazy with it i think i've waited as long as like a minute you know maybe two minutes where you keep this bait suspended down there in their face and get them to buy it yeah if you've got an area where you know the fish are then it all comes down to pause especially in the winter time those fuckers are cold they don't want to bite yep you know they're lethargic and if they've seen it 10 times in that same place and it won't leave and it's just sitting there yeah they're gonna open their mouth at some point yeah you know so couple notes lucky craft 
in my opinion, Lucky Craft makes the best true suspending bait. Yes. So mm -hmm. if you want your bait to sit perfectly still in mm -hmm. the water, Lucky Craft does it better than anybody. Right. Right. So a lot of Mega Bass baits will say suspend on them, but they're actually tuned to like such a specific water temp. Yeah. That they're almost always going to be a slow float. Yeah. Right. Uh, sometimes it might even be a slow sink depending on yeah. the temp. Lucky Craft sit more horizontal and mm -hmm. it just seems like they suspend so perfectly. Yeah. Now, the second note is, is that it may seem crazy to, you know, twitch twitch pause and right. leave it for a minute like, yeah a minute's hard right oh, right like 10 seconds is really yeah. tough if yeah. you think of like jerk jerk one two three yeah. four five yeah six is so you're like a crackhead like yeah. ah, i gotta hit it you know what i mean there, though so what's cool about a jerk bait that suspends mm -hmm. is even though you're not imparting any action if it's a windy day, which it almost always is when it's cold. Why yeah. is that, by the way? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. So if there's always some kind of movement or current in the water, yeah. that thing's not just sitting still. No. Like, it's it's moving with yeah. the water, right? So it's going to have these real subtle shifts in movement to them. Yeah. The same way a shad would. You know, I mean, if you look at a shad or any kind of bait fish... In the winter, they're not like just do 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 do. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're literally just staying still, and just their fins are kind of micro moving. Yeah. And then when they move, it's just very little, small, right? Mm -hmm. So you're actually doing more to imitate the real thing by not doing yeah. anything mm -hmm. than you are by jerking. Yeah. Second, you jerk, and the thing moves like this. It's no longer looking like the real thing. No. Right. <laughs> So the longer the pause, the more natural of an imitation you're actually giving the fish. Absolutely. Versus trying to impart a bunch of action. Yeah. Right. And, and like, I think people just think of it backwards. Like they think yeah. that this movement is what's actually looking like the bait fish. Right. But no bait fish moves like this no. in the winter time. <laughs> no. Right? So super subtle. Yeah. Keep remember this movement, those jerks that twitches, is to call the fish to it. Yeah. Right? So they're almost always going to eat it when it's just sitting there. Yeah. yeah. So also in my movements, like sometimes that rip, rip might just be like a rip, rip. Like, so you go from like a standstill to just maybe walk the bait like a little bit, like just pull it forward like a little tiny bit. Yeah. And that might be what gets them to bite without that crazy. But if they're just sitting there on it and all of a sudden it just turns broadside. Yeah. That's it. Hard. Because if yeah. you do that and it's sitting there and that fish is looking at it and then all of a sudden that you do this crazy action, yeah. it almost disturb the fish or like talk them into not biting it. Right. So my first movement after it's been sitting there is just a small twitch first. Yeah. And then another little pause and then then back to my regular cadence. Yeah. And guys using live scope, you can you can do this on your own. Yeah. Test it. Right. Right? Throw it out there, watch a fish come up to it and be staring at it. Yeah. And give it a big jerk and watch what happens. Dude, think right? about like before live scope, like we were just getting an area with fish and we would just have to just sit there and try forty different cadences <laughs> until one bit and they're like, This is it. Right. Now but, it's gone. But that's <laughs> the thing with this technique though. Yeah. Is <clears throat> without going down like a super live scope rabbit hole. Yeah. A lot of guys that are coming into bass fishing right now that are starting with live scope yeah. are going to lose potentially some of that instinct of figuring it out on your own. Yeah. And yeah. they're going to lie too much on watching their graph. Right. Mm -hmm. Because there is still something to be said about figuring out a magical cadence or yeah. a rhythm, right? Because it's very difficult to replicate the same exact thing right. if you're in tune with the graph instead of in tune with yourself and what you're doing. Right. Right? So, you know, before all the live scope, we had to really pay attention to, okay, I'm just tapping the slack or I'm pulling the whole bait yeah. or I'm move I can feel it move like a solid two feet each time or, you know... I mean, so many little microscopic things that yeah. you're paying attention to that you're doing mm -hmm. because you have to, right? So it's important that even though you have screens that can show you all this stuff and what's actually happening, yeah, 
the most important thing is that you're paying attention to what it is that you did right. to get the thing to happen yeah. so that you can replicate that, mm -hmm. right? Now, one more thing on Stacy. Don't be afraid to sweep this. Yeah. So this is one of those baits that can be fished just like a shad instead of a jerk bait. So yeah. don't be afraid to throw this, wind it down like Julia said, and instead of jerking it, just give it a sweep, yeah. right? Just pull it. So what that would look like is you're winding down, right? And normally with a jerk bait, you're gonna give it a couple of twitches, wind up the slack, right? So instead of that, you're just gonna kind of pull it. Yep. Just a couple feet and then pause. And then all it's gonna do is just gonna flash and then pause. Yep. Flash and pause. So great it's cold water technique. less intrusive, Yeah. less movement. That's a great way to get them if they're suspended. It's a great way to get them on like bluffs. Yeah. Like when you know they're on like a wall or a bluff or mm -hmm. something, you don't need to be like jerking the shit out of thing because no. think of how loud the rattles are when there's yeah. just a, a rock wall right here mm. that they live in, yeah. right? And all of a sudden you're just like, bam, bam, bam. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, dude, they're gonna go nuts. <laughs> right. Whereas when you just sweep it, it's just, shh, yeah. right? It's just very natural moving through. It's a much less intrusive Absolutely. way to do it. So. Play with the cadence on that. Thing. That's a little sneaky trick he just gave you guys too, so don't take that for granted. I wasn't gonna say anything. <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna keep jerking it. It's yeah. kind of crazy <laughs> to say that because I was just on a bite like that at one of our local lakes. Yeah. Where it was on a plus one actually. You had to rip it through the grass like you would twitch it until you got stuck. Yeah. Rip it out one hard time and then just sweep the rod real quick and almost every time after you sweep the rod up, there's a fish on. It. Yeah. Interesting. It was just like I think that initial pop to get their attention yep and then they shot up to it and then it just kind of wiggled away from them real yep. quick and then they crushed it so it's weird yeah. it's weird getting back i mean it almost mirrors what julia said that you know this movement the the, the jerking this is just to attract them to it yeah yep. so don't get too stuck in one cadence yep like Mix it up. play with it if they're not eating it try a couple hard jerks mm -hmm. and then maybe add in a sweep or let it pause for a long time maybe just yep. do a little short movement like what you were talking about yeah mm -hmm. mix and match it until you dial it in and then try to repeat what you did right i would say 19 times out of 20 on a lake or reservoir like yeah. on still water whatever you did to get bit on the first fish is what you need to do to get bit on the fish the rest of the day absolutely so yeah. if you pay attention to that cadence and you repeat it you should be able to get in a pattern in a groove but don't get stuck on that yeah. because one day it might be this cadence and the next day it's this right. cadence, right? So it's going to change day to day. Yeah, but especially when it's cold. It's so hard to get them to bite already. And yeah. if they're willing to do something, keep feeding them that. Yeah, you know? yep. yeah. Take it stay in that lane. Yeah. 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 Now, I'm going to talk about this guy. So this is an EdoVision 110 plus 2. Now, they make two, a couple different deep divers, a plus yeah. 1 and a plus 2. I don't consider a plus 1 to be a deep diver. No. Because a plus one is more like an eight, nine foot. Yeah. And I mean, I guess that's deep if your deepest spot is 15 feet. Right. Right. <laughs> um, so, you know, I brought it here just to mention it. Mm -hmm. But this for me is more of like a daily use. Yeah. One that you just want to kind of get it in eight or nine that feet. That one still breaks out and gets crazy too. I feel yeah. like that one's a little more tighter. Yeah. So the plus two is designed like this guy actually gets down pretty easily like 14 15 feet it has a yeah. very steep dive to it and it's got a very unique shaped lip to it so it's much wider lip than like an original plus one now this is one of those baits that's a little bit difficult to get in a groove with and we were talking about this before mm -hmm. we started filming that a lot of guys really don't think they like this bait. right i was almost gonna say don't like it but they don't think they like it. Yeah. Because it's with a regular 110, pointer 100, any shallow diving jerk bait, you can kind of suck. Yeah. And mm -hmm. have pretty good success. Mm -hmm. Right? Because yeah. the bait's shallow, yeah. it's pretty erratic. Usually when they're eating it, the fish are kind of aggressive. Yeah. And so all of a sudden you just throw something kind of moving, like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna go eat that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so you can kind of suck and overwork your bait. Right. And if the bait you know, goes from side to side, and all of a sudden one time it rolls up on its side, right. it doesn't matter. Like, they still eat it, right? Yeah. When you go to this bait, this bait really needs precision. Yes. So you gotta have to pay attention to what you're doing. As it gets down, because of the shape of this lip, right? Mm -hmm. They built this bait to have that same kind of tight two-in-one motion that original 110 has, 
but it only works that way if you're tapping the slack on your cadence. Yeah. So if you're jerking too hard and on your jerk, by the time you get to the middle part of your jerk, if you can feel yourself pulling the bait, it's too hard. Right. Yep. Right. So what happens is if you're pulling the bait on the middle of your jerk, yeah. what happens because that lip is so big, it pulls it to the side and it washes it out. Yeah. Right. And so you're never getting true depth. You're never really getting that beautiful kind of two-in-one movement. You're getting these crazy movements. Yeah. Then nothing's going to fucking eat in the wintertime. Right. right. Exactly. So if you want this thing to get down there and literally just do these tight little motions, you've got to tap the slack. So you shouldn't actually feel the bait yeah. until you're done yeah. with your cadence. So it's all slack line and then right there, yeah. you felt it, right? So all you're doing is just giving it a pop, right? So it's almost just like the line is snapping yeah. and then right there when it snaps at the end, it's just enough for it to kind of have that really nice natural little movement. Yeah, okay? and that's great information because I'm just, I'm learning this bait. You know, I've got some time on it, but still trying to figure out where it shines. And, you know, I was just kind of, Clued in right there. Like I was learning a lot just listening to you talk about that and I'm going to add it to my arsenal. Yeah, dude, I, you know, every worm fish is different. Every yeah. spinnerbait fish is different. Every crankbait sure. fish is different. It's the same with jerkbaits. Yeah. You can't take the same cadence and apply it to every single bait. It just right. doesn't, it doesn't work that way because yeah. there's different lips, there's different shapes, there's different depths. So you have to kind of learn each bait. It's a lot like glide bait fishing. Yeah. I think jerk baits and glide baits are probably much more similar right. than they are different because both of those techniques are really dependent on the angler to give the bait the action yeah. to get the bite. For and sure. that's why we love jerkbait fishing because it's so rewarding. Yeah. Because we we made that bite happen. Yeah. Right? It was sure. our cadence or our lack of cadence or whatever it is that we're doing yeah. that's causing this bait to move and do what it's doing. So it's just got so much reward, but it's not the same cadence for every bait. Yeah. Right? So that bait has a thicker lip. Mm -hmm. It's a more horizontal bait. So when it yeah. sits, it's sitting more horizontal. So if you jerk it too hard, it's no problem. Mm -hmm. It moves just fine. Yeah. This bait is designed to sit like so nose down and tail up. Right. And if you jerk too hard, it washes out. So mm -hmm. it's got to be much more precise, right? For sure. So everyone is just slightly different. Yeah. Right? But this is a great, super finesse, out of the package, 15 foot diver, super easy to control in deep water. You just got to make sure you don't overwork it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right, let's talk about a couple of other things really quick. So <clears throat> I would say 90% of the time, that's my one-two punch. Yeah, it's hard to beat that, man. You know what I mean? So I, I would be shocked they if there's this. deep water jerkbait fish and they're not eating one <laughs> of those that. two. Yeah. <laughs> but there are some other baits to mention that are gaining a lot of popularity. So I'm just going to fly through them really quick. So yeah. um, one of the best-selling jerkbaits in our store uh, is a Duo Realis jerkbait. The jerkbait 120 mm -hmm. is, I mean, just absolutely crushes it. They have started to come out with some smaller size, 110s, 100s, 85s. Well, they are making a deep diving version in the 100 now. Yeah. So you get a little bit smaller package, uh, but in a deeper diving lip. And again, it's going to be like that true, like 12, 13 foot diver. Uh, what's great about a Duo bait, same as with a Lucky Craft bait, you get that made in Japan for like yeah. 15 bucks. Right. So you're not having to spend a shit ton of money yeah. to get a really good quality jerk bait. Mm -hmm. So that could be a really solid option. Pointer 100 DD is another good one. I think the Stacy is better yeah. in the winter, mm -hmm. but this has a lot of game and I've been on some amazing pointer bites in the winter. Yeah. The pointer is going to give you a lot of flashing. Yeah. So it does have side to side movement, like walking the dog, but it gives you a lot of that flash from the top to bottom Body roll. that seems to get big bites. Yeah. So the pointer has always been like a big fish jerk bait. Has. So if you guys are trying to maximize the size or you live places where the fish are big, you're not just trying to scrap together 10 pounds to yeah. you know weigh in, a pointer is probably not a bad idea to have in your lineup because sure. it really does get a big bite. So mm -hmm. they don't make a ton of colors in this anymore. I wish yeah. they did, um, but there's still some of the key colors are available in it. So that could be a really good one. 
one that just recently has become kind of a staff favorite yeah. is this guy. So this is made by Raid. This is a level minnow, and this is the plus version. So the plus version is basically just like an MR. So it's got a little bit longer lip. Now, this is going to be similar to a uh, plus one as far as dive depth, yeah. except this level minnow casts so damn far. Oh, like, yeah. it is crazy yeah. how far you can throw this. If you guys suck at throwing jerk baits, <laughs> like if you're needing to throw it into the wind or you yeah. just can't quite dial your stuff, you sh guys should pick up a raid. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There's Sweet. something about it, it's just a smaller profile. Sexy it's a skinnier too. profile. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, Tell you like know. my women. Skinny? Yeah, skinny Tall and, and good skinny. looking. Yeah. <laughs> Orange bellies. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you can see it's it's got a lot of length, but it's just, it's narrow, right? Hold your Stacy up. So, I mean, we're splitting fractions, but this one is right. just longer and thinner. Yeah. Right? You see how this kind of has a wide and then down, and this kind of has a wide and then down? Mm -hmm. This is pretty much just the sleek. same, same sleek. So it's yeah. just different. Right, just different, but the castability on this is awesome. So because you get the longer cast, you're gonna get longer depth, Yeah. right? So remember that everything's gonna kind of have, when you make the cast and you get the bait down, it's always gonna have kind of this bow back yeah. to the bow. So you're only gonna be able to keep it at max depth for so long yeah. before it's gonna start coming Strike up. Strike zone and then slowly start to yeah. get out of it. <laughs> so the longer you can throw, the more time you have with that yeah. bait in the zone. So that's why I included it in there. Um, one more to talk about, <laughs> OSP. Let me give away another little secret. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this has been like a Colorado River secret for us yeah. for a long time. This is the OSP Power Dunk. Now this is technically a shad, is yeah. what they categorize it as. But for me, it's more of a jerk bait. Um, it can even be a crank bait, but I use it more like a jerk bait. It's got a really deep diving lip, but what makes this one cool is that the dunk is designed to be a cover deflecting yeah. bait. So where everything else we've talked about so far, I would consider open water. Yeah. Like I'm not really gonna throw these in bush, like that in a right. bush, right? Yeah. That's like a bluff wall across a point, down a ditch, For over sure. trees, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This is one that if you guys have a ton of cover and you need to put it like into brush, mm -hmm. it will come through brush better than any of the other jerk baits. And it's a really small package. Yeah. So you're gonna get it down that 10 to 15 foot, it's designed to come through brush and bounce up and over uh, laydowns and that kind of stuff. So it could be a really good one depending on where you are. If yeah. you're in open water, stay with one of these yeah. original ones that we talked so about. So that bait, yeah. you tease us with that like before a decade, or over a decade ago. Yeah. Uh, he brought him into the old store for a little bit and cold water, like back to that sweeping technique. Yeah. We fell in love with it. We actually won some tournaments on it and then they kind of went away and then yep. we kind of got stuck. But now they're back and that cold water, like when he was talking about sweeping it, yep. that bait's super tight and just vibrates through the rod and gets It's a good one. Especially smallmouth. Yeah. 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 So it could be one that would be important for you guys. So it's worth a mention. For yeah. sure. It's a great size at that depth. For yeah. sure. Yeah. It's hard to get a small bait down really yeah. deep. Yeah. Uh, now, Line, we pretty much talked about. Yeah. I'm a straight fluoro person. For sure, yeah. So, you know, 99 out of 100 times, I'm straight fluoro. Mm -hmm. If it's something different, it's mono. And it's yeah. just to get the float, like what you talked about. Yep. yep. 10 pound is a great starting point if you guys are looking for a starting point. Yep. I think 10 pounds is probably the most universal. When you look at a bait like uh, a Mega Bass bait, yeah. Mega Bass gets a lot of bad rap for their hooks being weak. Yeah. Right? 110 hooks were actually designed to be fished on seven to eight pound line. So if you guys are going above eight pound, you're overpowering the hook yeah. for what it was built for, right? right? Now, I love these hooks, Yeah. but you have to understand that they were designed for light line. Mm -hmm. So if you're going above 10, you're probably gonna wanna change these hooks. Yeah. Even 10, you might wanna change the hooks. I leave them, yeah. um, but you will wanna back off the drag, make sure you're not uh, yeah. straighting them. But with that in mind, if you drop to a seven or an eight pound, you're gonna get deeper depth. Yeah. You're going to get either more suspend or even a sink yeah. out of it because there's just less line to intrude and yeah. the bait will act different. So keep that in mind too, is that the baits are gonna act different on different lines, Yeah. right? I usually avoid braid. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I just don't like it. Yeah, I've mm. never been a fan. Too much shock. 
Yeah, that lighter line though, like that seven and eight pound, like if you've never tried it, it sounds intimidating, especially with, like these aren't really small baits. So, you know, and you're using like a normal jerk bait rod, it doesn't, does sound intimidating, but it's strong, man. Like seven pound and eight pound strong line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially like if you have the right equipment and they're at the end of a long cast, like you're yeah, going to catch them. Like, and have it's winter. Yep. So, yeah. I mean, they're not going to bulldog you no the way they would like mm -hmm. in fall right no, i'm gonna lay over <laughs> yeah yeah so you have more power with eight pound in yeah. january and february than you do in september or october yeah yeah so, so just have confidence in that lighter line yeah keep sharp hooks yeah yeah especially in the winter yeah Good i line. mean hooks are super critically important oh. so if you guys are finding that you're taking a jerk bait like this and you're actually hitting rock and you're grinding on the bottom yeah make sure you're checking your hooks yeah. okay because all of that is going to weaken these hooks if you guys need to change out your hooks i guess i should mention i like the katsawagi out barbs on yeah. my mega bass uh if i was going to change to something else i do an owner st36 yep. it's yep. probably the standard jerk bait treble replacement yeah uh it's just <clears throat> the reason i prefer that over say like a gamagatsu is it is balanced perfectly to center so a lot of hooks will be two uh hooks on the bottom and then one welded to the top yeah right so there there's a slight off balance to them owners are perfectly balanced to center so when you're changing them you don't have to pay any attention to which way you put them on right yeah. it could go that way it could go that way and it's going to be balanced to center so you're not going to change the action of the bait yeah but again if you want it to sink if you want it to float if you want it to have a different action then you can play with hooks and try yeah. some different things okay. i feel like for me if i'm 10 pound and under I'm not going to mess shit up, you know. I'm going to stick with those Mega Bass hooks. Yep. I'll replace them, and, but if I do go to that 12-pound, that ST36 is money. If you guys play with the Duo or you play with the Raid, the hooks that come on them are great. Mm -hmm. I've had great success with both of those. If you play with the Lucky Craft, I would change those. Yes. I'm not a big fan of Lucky Craft hooks. Love their baits. No. Hooks are really mid for me. Yeah. So ST36. these would be ST36s right out of the gate for yeah. me. One red um, one. <laughs> red one would be sick on that color. Yeah. Let, let's talk about color really quick. Okay. Okay. I don't play too much in color in the winter. I keep it really simple. Yeah. I'm curious. We didn't really talk about this. This is kind of, for me, like a one-two punch in the winter. Yeah. So I like a white bait, mm -hmm. whether it's something like a French Pearl, a Stain Reaction, a Bone, just something with some white to yeah. it. And then I really like a like a fully transparent, like a pro blue. Yeah. Something like you have like a, a ghost Tennessee shad. Yeah. Something that's just got some transparency mm -hmm. to it. Where are you at with color? I'm pretty close. So if I'm not in something like this, I'm like ghost minnow, uh, that transparent. And then in Lucky Craft, if I want to go a little bit brighter, a little bit more solid, their chartreuse shad has enough white in it for me. Yeah. And mm -hmm. honestly, in those three, it's hard to just, you know. I get consider away from chartreuse those. shad white. Yeah, especially the Lucky Crafts. They, this They're the best chartreuse. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's talk rod real quick because you mentioned rod yeah. a little bit ago. Everybody makes a rod that can be good for a jerk bait. Mm -hmm. If you are in something like a, I don't know, Shimano X Pride or a G Loomis or a St. Croix or something like that, yeah. a seven foot ish medium, like regular taper, will get the job done. Right. Right. The reason I, well, there's several reasons. The biggest thing I'm looking for is a rod, in a rod, I don't want to wear myself out jerking all day. No. Those, right? So a jerkbait rod is a really difficult rod mm -hmm. that needs to be pretty fast. Yeah. Because when you're twitching, you don't want that rod to be vibrating because all that vibrating that goes back to your hand is what wears you out. Exactly. But when you hook them, they're yeah. almost always hooked somewhere like, funky yeah right mm -hmm. so Top you want side. the rod to give and bend so that it's it's forgiving so yeah. you're not ripping them out exactly. it's a difficult rod to make absolutely and mega bass builds their rods specifically for the baits yeah so when they make a jerkbait rod they're not taking a jig and worm rod and just making it a medium so it can yeah. throw a jerkbait right they're literally making a jerkbait rod from a 110 rod bottom to <laughs> top yeah for that bait yeah right and you can feel the difference. Absolutely. So 
for me, this is where I've been. I've did. I've played with all of them because I love throwing a jerk bait. Yeah. Nothing is like these for me. Yeah. But you know, obviously, you guys try what you guys want to try. I'm throwing the P5 110 stick. Yeah. I'm in love with that rod. Um, but the 110 special coming out, or the rod that's in your hand, which yep. is a jerk bait special. Jerk bait special. Okay. Those could be possibly better rods on a longer cast, more line pickup, uh, in a deeper diving jerkbait, mm -hmm. kind of needs a little more power. Right. Yeah. You know what absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. It's yeah. just, it's down a little deeper. It, you're pulling more bill. You're pulling more bait. Right. It needs just a little more yeah. oomph. So the jerkbait special in your hand, yeah, uh, or the 110 special that'll be coming out in February, yeah, mm -hmm. will deliver that a so little good. bit more. Yeah. I know you've been throwing the 110 special since 110 special has been a thing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know that would be my recommendation yep. if you're deciding if you've been looking at Mega Bass, you're deciding between Orochi and a Levante. I would do the Orochi on this one. Absolutely. So the way you decipher between those two is the Orochi is a little faster. Levante is a little softer. Mm -hmm. So Levante is actually better for throwing like a 110 and smaller. Yeah. So if you throw a lot of juniors, junior plus ones, X nana hands, that kind of stuff, yeah. dude, the Levante is actually a better rod than the Orochi for $100 less. Right. But if you're throwing 110 plus ones, 110 plus twos, you know, like you're throwing that deeper, a little, little bit bigger, the Orochi is super nice because it's the perfect mix of fast and forgiveness. Absolutely. And same thing with the P5s. If you guys are just throwing like straight shallow divers, the 110 stick is sick, but it's nice to have that 110 special on yeah. the deeper diver stuff. It just gives you a little bit more control, I yeah. would say, with that deeper diver and the longer cast. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And it's a technical technique too. So it, jerking all day long, it, you know, you can get fatigued and it can not It can be kind of annoying. So it yeah. kind of makes you want to put it down and do something else if you have the right rod. It makes it for a good day of fishing yeah. with a technique that could be a pain in the ass. Somebody's wife just walked in hearing you talking about jerking all day long. And yeah. Is wondering <laughs> what their husband yeah. is Hi, watching. Wife. Yeah. Hi, wife. Really excited. Yeah. Really yeah. Excited. yeah. What are you watching? <laughs> exactly. It was a very happy man or very disappointed. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So that is that is our breakdown and our take on cold water deep jerk bait yeah. fishing. Cold I, water jerk plug. That was a deeper rabbit hole, again, yeah. than I expected it to be. So I appreciate you taking the time course, man. And, and going through it. Uh, if you guys don't follow Julius, make sure you do. Hop on his Instagram. We'll put it down below. Uh, but follow him around this year. You've got how many tournaments? Nine tournaments? Nine more. Okay. Yep. So how many do you think a jerkbait is going to play a role? At least two or three I can think of right now. Yeah. Yeah, pre-spawn tournaments. Yeah. So, so I mean, jerkbait is just such... If you're lucky and you live in a place like we do, you yeah. throw it year round. But no matter where you live, winter into spawn. Oh yeah. Is without question the best time of the year to throw a jerk bait. So give it a go, guys. Go out there and try it. Play with your cadence. Uh, again, if you're fortunate enough to have forward facing sonar, yeah. Work, try some of these cadences for yourself and see what happens when a fish is staring for at sure. it and you twitch it really hard if yeah. the fish goes away. The next time you get a fish up to it, give it just a little small little pop or a little sweep instead of a yeah. hard jerk and see if that changes it. It might open up your The light bulb world, will go off. Right? <laughs> so if you guys have any questions on anything we covered or anything we didn't cover, drop it down below and Julius or myself or CJ will get to it. As always, guys, on behalf of myself and Hippie and Desert Bassin. <laughs> DJ. Thank you, guys. <laughs> JC over here. JC. Guys, thank you for giving us time. We really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for your business. Thank yeah. you for your support. And we will see you again soon. Go catch some jerkbait fish. Catch right? them up. Peace out, my friends. See you, boys. See ya.